Hello! In today's video I'm going to describe exactly how I made my Mark II ammo can stove. This is a stove that burns without smoke and if you want to see that check out my other videos where I've got a burn video of this stove. Thank you to everybody who commented and liked my previous video, it's thanks to you that I've made this one. As I said in my burn video I'm working on a Mark III of these stoves so it's going to be an improved version and I'm going to give you complete instructions on my website of how you can build one of these yourself. That's going to take a while to make though because I'm trying to do as professional job as possible so it's taking quite a while. I know from your comments that some of you are building stoves right now and you wanted help straight away so that's why I've made this interim video and hopefully this will help you to build your stoves quickly. I'm still designing the Mark III so if you guys have got any comments, if you've got anything you want to see incorporated, if you've got any suggestions to make this stove better then please leave them in the comments section and who knows, your idea might make it into the Mark III. So let's have a look at this stove, how I built it and how you can build one too. Let's start at the top of the stove and then work our way down. The flue is made out of 50 millimetres, that's two inches, stainless steel pipe. I had some of this lying around in the garage so that's why I used it. And it has two sections, this upper section slides onto the lower section. I later found that this upper section is surplus to requirements. There are lots of different flue options available depending on your application. In my garage at home I've got a section of aluminium tubing about two and a half inches wide and that allows me to use this stove inside the garage, it gets really toasty in there. Alternatively I've got some three inch flue pipe which sits on the lower flue section. It'd be very simple to make a seal that goes between the two flue sections but actually I found that that's not necessary. Once this gets up to working temperature it draws cold air in from down below and expels it out at the top so all the smoke from the stove gets drawn upwards and I've never seen any smoke coming downwards through the bottom of the flue. So that's us finished with the flue. If you want a cooking surface on this stove that's really easy to achieve. The handle is retained by two small brackets and each of those only has four rivets so if you were to get a screwdriver, a flat bladed screwdriver and a hammer in about 30 seconds you could knock them off and you'd have a cooking surface here. Now this is an extremely hot part of the stove, the secondary burn takes place just below here and all the hot gases pass along this surface before going out of the flue so that would work really well for cooking. There are lots of different ways of attaching your flue to the stove. You can weld it, bolt it, there are lots of different options. I found a really simple way and I'll just explain with this piece of card how I did it and how you can do it easily too. Imagine that this card is the top of the stove. You get your flue, place it on top, draw around it and that gives you the circumference that you're going to need to make. Then with a grinder you just simply cut across the shape that you've just made. You make four cuts like that then that's perfect. I'll cut the card with the scissors and we'll pretend I've just used a grinder. Then all you need to do is bend up the tabs that you've just created, wrap some stove rope around the bottom of your flue. If you know how to whip it then you can whip it so that it stays in position. Then you insert your flue and then I just use Jubilee clips. So if you place Jubilee clips around the bottom here you can compress that, it compresses it against the stove rope and then you get a smoke tight seal. Now let's work our way down towards the bottom of the stove. If we open it up, there you can see the inside, the inside of the flue. There you have the stove rope wrapped around and it, with the Jubilee clips it's really solid, it, it doesn't really move. The first thing you want to do is remove the rubber seal that sits around the top of your ammo can. Now you can just stick a screwdriver in pull that out and replace it with some stove rope. The stove rope gets compressed when you close the stove with its closing mechanism and you won't get any smoke escaping from around there. The next thing we come to are these two turnbuckles. A couple of people asked me what the purpose of these was and this is a stove door closing mechanism. There are two closing mechanisms on this door, one is a quarter turn latch so you rotate it, the door opens, you close and then you rotate it and it locks the door closed. I added these as another way of sealing the door and basically with a, a long piece of metal you can turn each of these a quarter turn and that locks the door extremely tight. To fit these turnbuckles I just drilled a hole on each side and then you can assemble them in situ. 
The next thing we come to is the baffle. And if I just pull this out, I can show you how it's made. And basically it's thin steel, it's around 0.8 millimeters thick. And to make it, I measured up and bent the steel into the desired shape. So it's not very thick, but there's no real sign of, of major deterioration. I'd say this stove's been running for about 20 hours, so it's holding out quite well really for a cheap piece of steel. Here's a closer up view of it. Just You can work out how I made it just by looking at it. The next thing we come to is the secondary air pipe. So as you can see, this comes in from the outside. I just made a hole there. It comes in across the back of the stove, comes up and then comes across. So it's been drilled with lots of small holes and when the stove is operating, this draws in cold air from outside. It gets preheated on the way down across the, uh, the burn chamber and then the preheated air rises and is expelled naturally through these holes and because this area is, is just underneath the baffle all the, the heat and flame is in this area so it's a very hot area and the, uh, the secondary air then reignites what would be smoke and the smoke is burnt and the smoke burns on the way up past the baffle and across this upper section of the stove so underneath here you would have flame while the stove is in operation just prior to it going up and out of the flue. And there's a closer view of the secondary air. It's just made from water pipes, galvanized steel water pipes, and they were simple to find and very cheap. I have to say the Mark I version that I made of this stove, which you can find more details about on my website, uh, that used a copper pipe for the secondary air. And to be honest with you, the, uh, the heat transferring copper is far superior to that of steel. So I think for the Mark III, I'll go back to using copper pipes because it works fantastically. At this stage I can show you the uh, insulation. So the, the stove is uninsulated on the front, that's where the door is, and I found that with insulation on these three sides then the, uh, the stove got up to the, the correct working temperature to get a good secondary burn. So you don't need to insulate every part of your stove, if you did that heat wouldn't really radiate into where you're trying to heat and it would be uh, going out of the flue instead. So. You need enough insulation to get the temperature high enough to get secondary burn, but you don't want to retain all the heat within the stove. So this is how I achieved that. Um, just again, thin steel, and then in the gap between the inner skin and the outer skin, I put some rock wool or fiberglass insulation, the kind of insulation that you might find in the attic or loft of a house. So the insulation is retained by steel here. I also had another section of stainless steel so as this was going to be a very hot area I just threw that in there to protect this part of the stove. This is the stainless steel that I used it's two millimeters thick and I actually got it for free from a, a local fabricator uh, they were throwing this away so I went around there and asked nicely and they gave it to me so I made the door from this same material as well. Speaking of the door, let's have a look at it. Lots of people asked about the stove glass that I used. I didn't actually use stove glass, I used something called mica. So starting at the hinge, I welded this and screwed it. Uh, the Mark III is gonna be riveted. I'm gonna make it much easier to build and there's not gonna be any welding involved. So here's the quarter turn latch that I mentioned earlier. That was made from a, a bolt and I just filed off a portion of the head and that fits quite precisely underneath there. So as you close the door you can turn it a quarter turn that locks it if you turn it the other way you can then open the door so it does two jobs in one i welded on a short stop at the bottom and then i welded on two little pieces of steel here which which kind of hold the mica in place but they do allow it to expand and contract there are some little gaps around it but that doesn't seem to have any negative effect on the stove continuing down we have some chicken wire that stops the burning fuel from uh, sitting on the bottom of the stove and being starved of oxygen. That allows the oxygen to get underneath there and burn all the way around the wood or whatever material it is that you're burning. The bottom of the stove is actually insulated. I have uh, about half an inch of rock wool insulation down there and then some metal on top just to uh, protect that. And then on top of that, I've got the chicken wire. The final part of the stove is this air intake slash rocket stove intake so 
this is where the the uh, primary air is drawn in again this was just something i found lying around in the garage that's why i used it to attach it to the stove i used the same technique as the top grinder bent it round then i placed some jubilee clips around here and some stove rope to insulate it somewhat too so when the stove is in operation at its full working temperature you can place sticks of wood or pellets or whatever you like really you can just add extra fuel through here and you don't need to open this door anymore so it's quite a useful feature if you want more information about this stove go and check out my website i've got a post there that talks about the mark one the mark two the mark three that's on its way so have a look at that as a reminder i'm still building the mark three so if you want to give me some of your ideas put them in the comments and you might see them incorporated into the next version Thanks for all your support guys, it's thanks to you that I've made this video and it's thanks to you that I'm continuing to work on this project and working on the Mark III which I hope you're really going to like. There's also another secret stove that is going to come out in the future. It's going to be much smaller than these stoves and I think you're going to love it. But for the moment that's a big secret so you'll just have to subscribe to my channel and then sooner or later you'll see what that's all about. That's it for now then, thanks for watching and don't forget, love life! <laughs>